Michael Dewey. I'm the group reporter for Team 2. I'll be explaining the overview and procedures for Lab 5, the jet engine. Uh, my lab partners are Christian, Jennifer, Jack, and myself. So the turbine overview shows each step that's involved in the cycle. First, air enters the turbine intake. Then it's sucked into the compressor. From there, fuel is, or fuel is added to make a highly compressed air fuel mixture. Um, this creates a highly pressurized air fuel, which is very uh, energy rich. Um, once the fuel is injected, it is ignited, which then results in thrust, which goes out and hits the thrust deflector. From there, it hits the free turbine, which then drives the alternator, which results in electrical output. So the turbine uses. Turbine engines are also known also known as gas turbines. They are a versatile power source commonly used in various applications. Um, because of their ability to use such a large variety of fuel sources, it's been widely used across the globe. Some applications are in airplane, airplane propulsion, marine propulsion, and electrical power generation. In this experiment, the jet is used in addition to a base plant. This means that in addition to the standard um, power generation at a plant, it's used when it's needed or when it needs extra power, such as startups, hot days where more power is needed, etc. So, lab safety. Uh, this is arguably the most dangerous lab we'll probably take as mechanical engineers. Um, and that's why lab safety is a crucial element. First off, proper PPE is required. Hearing protection, vision, vision protection is required. Next, a fire extinguisher nearby is required and a member should be able to know how to use it in an emergency. Um, next, all team members need to know what the emergency stop button looks like and how to use it in case of an emergency. It's a little red button, which I'll show you later. Um, next. Ensure all nearby debris is picked up in case when the turbine's running that nothing goes in and that could possibly damage it. Um, obviously, never exceed the turbine rating, which is somewhere in the lab, you know what exactly get it. Uh, but it should be over, over, uh, over spun. And then, obviously, when in doubt, ask questions, ask for help. So this is the control panel, like I was saying. Um, start off, obviously, you see it's all numbered. The number one is the master key, which powers on the panel as well as the turbine. Two is the start button. Three is the emergency stop button. You know, nice and red for stop, like a stop zone. Uh, four is the power level lever, which adjusts the power uh, going to the turbine. Five is the load level. Lever, uh, which adjusts the load on the free turbine. Um, six through, I think, 14 are all gauges that monitor different uh, aspects of it. And 15 is the generator overspeed warning light. So it's a little light that will light up. So the goals of the lab um, will be running the turbine at a, a variety of uh, RPM and load levels. Um, from this, we'll get a, ver a large data set which we can plot, which will give us the uh, max power, best RPM, the efficiency, uh, and a variety of other data points. So in the calculations, uh, we have mainly the efficiency equation that's gonna be used, which just shows you the work output over the energy in. So very simple. Um, to find the maximum power, we're going to use the graphs. Uh, wherever the peak is on the power graph, it should be watts over time, I believe, is the graph. Um, wherever the peak is, that's going to be the maximum power generated. So the procedure, the startup procedure, or the pre-check procedure, I'm sorry, um, make sure all uh, PPE is on, and check the area for debris. Make sure the cast, caster wheels on the jet are locked because I'm sure if they're unlocked, they'll take off and go down the sidewalk. Uh, make sure the master key is off. Throttle le lever is at the minimum position. Uh, 
uh, check the fuel and oil to make sure that they are at uh, proper levels. Uh, and then check the air and electrical supply for similar reasons. And then ensure the USB is connected to the computer. So the startup procedure. Uh, you're going to turn the master key on, first step. And then you're going to make sure the panel is lit up. Uh, it's going to have a variety of different lights and gauges that you can see turn on. Uh, and then you're going to set the throttle to maximum position. I believe this is to program it, I'm not 100%. Um, and then you go and set the load and throttle lever. Uh, you're going to pin those in the proper position. Um, and then once the experiment begins, you begin the data acquisition immediately. You're going to press the start button, wait for the run light to appear, vary the load and throttle smoothly. This is going to give you a nice clean data set on the plot. Uh, once you're finished collecting data, you hit the red stop button and you save it to a file. So the expected results, the uh, expected efficiency from the lab manual is going to be about 30% efficiency. Um, and the maximum power is going to be about a thousand watts. This is what I was saying about uh, the power versus time. And my reference is the lab manual. Any questions?